elephant penis stuck in a kitten, covered in crack ho shit. Horse intestines baked in a casserole, served to some preschool kids. Niggers, kikes, fix, slants, and gooks, let's not give them a pass. If you're insulted, I don't apologize. Suck a gay rhino's ass, and everybody sing fuck, 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 fuck. Showed you what they call them in Japan. Ever since I first heard of fucking Sailor Moon, I fucking hated them. Can you probably guess why? Do not let the 
computers of this town card for you, okay? This is some fucking dark shit right here. In this anime, there are decapitation, suicide, drug abuse, and fucking psychopathic cute-looking magical girls with cute character designs murdering to them with fucking rifles and shit. It's pretty much for dope and magical, but also weird-ass witches and a full-on fucking battle royale. <laughs> The story starts out pretty fucking cute to a girl schooler, Kyoki Kamikawa, who dreams of becoming an actual magical girl she plays as a cute little fucking RPG game featuring subject. Yeah, okay, okay. See, being a magical girl anime, there are of course some ridiculous amounts of mode I to the point that will probably fucking make you sick. But just bite your fucking lip and deal with it. It doesn't last forever. Turns out there are all these strange occurrences happening throughout the town this place in, with all these fucking speculations of magical girls committing them. And this, of course, interests Kuyuki, slightly alienate herself from friends, of course, because the whole magical girl thing seems immature. But after playing it one night, the game's annoying ass fucking backup character, Fab, with Yoda the most annoying fucking voice of the entire fucking season. Something comes to life and turns her into an actual, real-life national girl. Soon she finds herself introduced to an entire fucking community of national girls from this fucking game like chat room thing, who are each given their own special magical abilities as well as alternative forms and names to mask their human identities from one another. And their duties at first are to acquire a magical candy by using their magic to bring joy and happiness to people. And maybe we can show some bad guys too. Typical magical girl formula shit. But of course, the happy degrades rather fast. Found the information annoying magical character and now said he intended to have the members of the magical girl by half in a, in a several week time span, by a contest utilizing who can earn the most candies. At least, that's the pretense. But as the contest continues on and over, it becomes apparent these girls face a lot more of determination of their status should they drop out. And eventually, it slowly spawns these huge ass fucking buddies scrimmage for survival away from fucking magical life giving candies. And this pretty much leads Kyuki to slowly have her child's visit where a magical girl should be. Slowly crushed underneath a growing pile of fucking corpses. And you might be drawn to several correlations between this and Madoka Magica. Most likely the character Fab, in uh, relation to fucking Huey, or Huey, or however you want to fucking pronounce his name. And actually, that would be a pretty accurate distinction to make. I did come to, I did come to understand that Fab is truly this evil fucking ass entity by the fact he chooses these fucking truly mentally unstable women to bestow magical girl powers onto. But this kind of presents a lack of cooking up an original villain, I'm oh, sorry, Endo's End, uh, the person you wrote the light novel is based on. You can easily tell that this was fucking influenced by Madoka Magica, painfully obvious in fact. But the fact that she completely omitted everything I fucking hate about Madoka Magica originally and added in shit that I, I fucking like, like it's fucking transgender magic, which I'll explain in a minute, makes me really like what she came up with here. Granted, the only thing I read from the light novel was the prologue because Fucking, uh, the books that I was watching on didn't have them all fucking out and still translating them. So, I'm not sure how well the anime follows it, but the whole I read was, was going into the anime, but not until near the end of the first episode. So, while there are some similarities, I'm guessing there are some substantial differences as well. But, we're talking about the first episode of Prologue series, so again, I did, and again, I didn't read too much of the novel, so I'm unable to make my usual call. Now, animation-wise, as I said, you have to get past the fact there are a lot of fucking more blood fucking things here in the forms of these little fucking shooting versions of the characters when they're a little fucking magical little chat room thing. The better and more blood look the character design benefiting of the fucking benefiting the fucking magical little genre. But once you get past that and get to the fucking bloodshed, it all pays off in the end. <laughs> Fighting style. 
We got a fucking ninja girl, a fucking gunslinging cowgirl, and a girl in fucking swimsuit, a girl in pajamas, and even a fucking western star fucking nun. But some of these characters here are just downright fucking awesome, just in regards to what they are the core. Delta Kashani, for example, is Kokuyuki's male childhood friend, who is also an international girl, and as being as such, he can only he can only combine in Kokuyuki to freaking stuff on their hobbies and shit. But, as luck would have it, he also gets chosen for the project. But, being a boy, of course, his body changes into that of a girl, being fucking uh, as her as his fucking uh, master girl handle, when he transforms. So, <laughs> I guess, I guess this make him a tranny, basically, I guess? <laughs> I don't know, but I fucking love it. This is the kind of shit I want to mail the fucking Republic of Servants and all the fucking religious place out there just to fucking see your heads fucking explode. I put anything that goes against societal norms, and this would be such a thing. So the fact these types of characters are here is just fucking glorious to me. And while still being a boy, technically, as well as this fucking mess girl persona being a knight, basically, he pretty much vows to protect Koyuki and becomes her primary love interest. Showing that despite having tits and eyeshadow, he still very much likes women. And when I love Sakura, he, or she, he or she, however, however you fucking look at him, is still not my favorite character. Honestly, my favorite character was by far Akko Jota, or Hardcore Alice as her next girl name was. This girl is the definition of the immortal monster. As much as in her magical girl form, that is. No matter what you do to her, as long as she's in magical girl form, there is no stopping her. Literally. There is no killing this bitch. In one of the episodes, we see her fucking shot a million times, blow up a grenade, stack her over and over again, set on fire, stuff into a barrel, and shook her under water, all in succession, and she still comes back to fucking life. <laughs> If she's a magical girl mother and she wants you dead, you're already fucking dead, okay? Just say your fucking prayers, operate your body, and get it over with. You'll only die exhausted from running, okay? Who knows? Chances are she'll make a quick master. I mean, she looks like a sweet girl with those dead eyes and bags underneath them. But no, but no, really. I love this. I, I fucking love this girl. I love characters that look like they came straight out of fucking hell. And her design makes her feel like the most unique of the entire fucking cast and look all powerful and cute. Well, she doesn't really have that big of a role on net, other than befriending Koyuki and bringing her back from the brink of despair, I still hate seeing her go. And that's the sad thing about this cast. Don't get attached to any one character, because they pretty much all die. Since this is a battle royale themed anime, they're fucking pretty much killing each other to survive. So if you're going into this anime thinking about developing an emotional attachment to any character, do not. They all die. In very gory and or dark ways. <laughs> and this brings me to the clear psychological aspect of this anime, and I fucking love it. I mean, one girl dies by committing suicide after losing her, after losing her fucking loved one. And this is but as much as I love the side characters, there is a real problem with Koyuki as our main lead. She is a complete whiny pansy ass. Once the battle royal gets in deep and she finds out that fucking there's a fight to death pretty much, she counters my people, cries like a fucking little bitch, avoids fighting back, all because her vision of what magical girls are turned out to be one big fucking lie. And this made her very despite the main character. But now, but now that I think about it, as you watch, you come to see that this isn't really about her per se. As this is about the way out, we of course get a glimpse of each of the uh, other girls' past, often way they fucking die, which is sad, but whatever. But still, and these characters are about as what you would expect from an anime growing at shop value. In other words, they're all a bunch of rather sad and fucked up cases. What is a 19 year old pregnant housewife who knows the fucking High school girl had to leave, leave home and live on her own because her fucking poor mother brought home a fucking creeper. So I guess you could say that it's about all these magical girls combined as they fight unsex, un, un, fucking unsuccessfully for survival. And some of them don't even care about 
survival in the end. Like I said, if you just throw up a fucking murder psychopath, you get a pretty much a throw up the town, basically. And you can tell from the very beginning that some of them know more than they're letting on. Yes, there's some fucking irritating ass tropes here and characteristics here that people who they match the all shit would hate. But you guys need to look beyond all that. All there, yes, there are these fucking more aspects to this, but that just contributes to the fucking shock value. And, the sh- and it's shock value galore here. Think of this as my little pony or some shit with gun, blood, and decapitation. It was the same with the Dr. Matchup, but the more it proved to be just like it, an underlying theme, not the purpose. The purpose here is shock value. Don't let shit like the Mara get in the way of you watching this. I mean, head over to animalist.net and you'll see that the anime is rated 17 plus for violence and profanity. It's, fuck, it's, it's fucking awesome, and I love most of the anime world. But then, then there's the ending. While it does end on a good note, well, okay, I've never seen nothing, as I said, during the cat's fucking dying by the end. But a bad guy's motives are explained, he's clearly and we're really to me and things go on. But it's right at the very, like, the very, very end, like at the, uh, like the closing credits roll, where Koyuki actually starts training to fight. We get a short little montage of her actually sparring with the magical girl, when it survived, that is. She had finally started to grow the fuck up. And try to imagine how disappointed this fucking made me. All throughout the entire anime, she's a weak old whiny damsel in distress, always needing protection and someone all puss. And only in the last, just the last few minutes of the last episode, do we see her actually start trying to actually fight. Granted, I don't think there was any people remaining to fight, per se, but still, this really makes me want a continuation just to see what kind of badass she fucking turns into. So in a way, even though things are pretty much resolved, I actually want, I actually still want more in the end, just to see Kyuki actually grow into, char- into a character worth rooting for. And that was this anime's biggest disappointment. But as a whole, I fucking loved it. Mono Shoujo Ikusai Kekaku is an anime that should be enjoyed if you're a fan of Mono with shock value. The fact this carries a magic girl theme should mean jack fucking shit, okay? If anything, it can be enjoyed by both magic girl fans and that fun gore. Magic girl Isai Kekaku, as a rising project, gets a very well deserved 8 out of fucking 10 for me, and a bloody girl and Mona still approval. I'm not about to listen to any fucking comment saying that anyway, this is for fucking children, because it is fucking not. And with that, I'm fucking done. If you like this video, friends, find my one way mind to set fucking entertaining, and want to subscribe or watch this on fucking YouTube or any other trash I fucking like want, do not strike me wherever you're watching this. Subscribe to my podcast, because whatever trash I get on, I don't fucking trust. So find a link in the video description below. Comments and likes are stupid, but I'll leave them anyway. And if you watch me frequently, if I see the stretch, want to support me, Donate a few fifty to my Patreon page. Find a link to that too in the description video description below. Until next time, fellow human folk, I'm making a chance for free. And I just don't give a fuck.